All right, today I want to just document some glaze procedures. Uh, and some of these are almost like test tiles, just playing with Amico and, and Coyote glazes to see what they do. But this is a small vase uh, that I've poured marigold inside of and then covered it up with seaweed just to see what the effect is of the two colors together. Then on the outside, I put two coats of wasabi green. And these are all uh, Amico glazes. And then on the top half, you can see where the line is. I put seaweed on it and seaweed's kind of a runner. So it should really, tends to give the wasabi some blue textures, some kind of bleeds in. I want to try to post these uh, after they get fired. I'll add to the video and we'll come back and look and see what they did. So the next one is a small flower pot. And this is basically, I did seaweed times two, a couple of coats right around the top of it. And then I covered the whole thing with blue retiel. And that's a breaking glaze and it'll just break really nicely. This is a chattered pot. I did a little bit of chattering on it. You can see under the glaze. So it's got some pretty good texture to it. And blue retiel is just really known for breaking and giving you some copper on the highlights and then the blues and turquoise colors. Uh, should turn out really nice. The next one here is a vase that I just used coyote eggshell on the bottom and I did blue retail on the top. And after looking at it for a day or two, I decided to put some drips of smoky Merlot up here. You can see the drips on the inside and the outside. And I always love the way Smoky Merlot gives that real purple effect with the blues and the drips. It just, it can really just make it nice. And then I've just dumped some, uh, some globs and, and smeared some real thick oatmeal on it. And the oatmeal just tends to make things mesh and run a little bit. And I've gone down into the eggshell some, you can see, just so it's not just a straight line right there where that break is and the blues and everything should kind of run into it. And this is just going to be a lot of fun to just see how it turns out. Real interesting to play with oatmeal, seaweed, some of those that run. Here's the next one. And this one is a, this is a, a glaze combo I've been wanting to try. Just a little hand built bottle. But this has got a lot of different things. I covered it up twice with blue retiel. And then I did one coat of indigo float on top of it. And then I did stripes. I don't think we can see them. You'd have to really be able to see the light, but there's stripes, heavier stripes of indigo float of like about times three right in here. And when I got through with that, I covered the whole thing with ancient Jasper over the blues and the heavy stripes. And I just want to see how this breaks. And it may be a pleasant surprise and it may not. We'll see. The next one here I've got is just, uh, I've done a set of these tumblers. This is my second set that I've done. And this is just a uh, eggshell over speckled buff clay. And there's some different clays here that I've got. Some has been a, a, most of this is the speckled buff. The little bottle here that I showed was a uh, Laguna B mix, but this is speckled buff. And I just put a piece of masking tape around it to get this unfinished line and put eggshell on it and it'll come out with the real nice speckled finish. And the bottom part I did with obsidian, two times, uh, two coats of obsidian. And then I did another three coats of smoky Merlot on it. And that'll give us a real dark, deep purple color. Uh, and it'll be really nice when it's finished. I've got a set of these that someone is wanting. I sold a set put them in a shop and they sold in 20 minutes with this combination. They're just really pretty. So, and another little flower pot springs coming. So I'm kind of making some pots and, uh, this one is, uh, obsidian. You can see I've done a black ring. That's going to be obsidian right on the top. And then I did heavier, like two to three coats of obsidian here and then kind of faded it down. And in the bottom part, there's no obsidian, no, no black at all. Uh, 
and then I coated the whole thing with three coats of Smoky Merlot and we should get a real dark purple and then fades down and then it just gets real smoky looking down here uh, where you don't have any of the obsidian but where obsidian is under Smoky Merlot it's a very dark rich uh, burgundy Merlot color uh, more like the name says, I, I feel like, than just when you put it on plain, it tends to be kind of hazy. And maybe that's why they call it the Smoky Merlot. This this makes it, the obsidian gives it much more of a true dark wine Merlot color. So I have several others that I'm working on. And uh, if they finish out, we'll uh, I'll add them to the follow-up video. This is just a nice big bowl. And I'm doing the inside is just obsidian. I'm going to make it nice and black. It's got about four coats of that in there. And then on the outside, I want to do a blue retiel. Uh, maybe add some textured turquoise and blue retiel. And just get a real deep color out here on the outside with the black on the inside. And that'll be really nice when it's finished. So uh, that's about it. I'll add to the video. And... Uh, these will be out of the kiln in probably a week or two, and we'll see the second half attached to this one, hopefully. Thanks for watching. This vase was uh, glazed with storm on the inside, and then we have indigo uh, float, two coats on the outside and inside rim, and then we have two coats of ancient jasper. And then just lightly brushed on top of the two coats of ancient jasper was again the indigo float and we're trying to get a real blended feel here uh, for this one i'll update and post the finished results at the end of this video thanks here's another vase to add to the collection uh, this little jewel has been uh, coated in wasabi at the top and it goes all the way down halfway into the grooves and then we have marigold that comes from the bottom all the way up to halfway in the middle and I did three coats of each maybe four and then covered the seam and all the grooves with seaweed so we have wasabi C43 Marigold C60 and then covered the middle part there of both of them with seaweed Potter's Choice 42. And when this gets out of the kiln, this should be a nice, bright uh, little pot, little vase, and it's on uh, Laguna Speckled Buff Clay. So we're going to get some pop in there, some, uh, we'll get some iron look from it, speckled like this uh, little tea bowl that is uh, done with speckled buff clay. And it is uh, actually light green chino from Coyote. Just one color and made a beautiful little pot. Here's the follow up uh, to the beginning of this video, which is just covering some of these glazes and uh, letting you see some of the test pots and glazes that we've put down this was the one that we had marigold poured inside with seaweed and it ended up giving us a real green color inside and then we put marigold around the top a couple of a uh, couple of layers of that and then two times wasabi as your amico glazes amico wasabi on speckled buff clay and then the top half we did in seaweed and i expected to get more blues out of it there's a hint of blue in there but it just really kind of made things a little bit darker green on this particular pot. It's not always the case, but that's the way this one came out. So really pretty, kind of a nice, uh, makes me think of a retro avocado green with uh, the specks in it and all. So it's a pretty little pot. Next one here that we'd done was the, uh, this pot was uh, seaweed, uh, couple of layers of seaweed two times on the top uh, third and then I did three coats of blue retiel and you can see that the the seaweed was only up to here but it ran seaweed tends to run and it ran down 
left us with uh, the blue retiel, the way it breaks down here, and then the seaweed coming down over the top of it. And uh, it's a pretty, pretty little flower pot. Right in there. Has a lot of nice color and break to it. And then we have the vase, which was, uh, it had blue retiel on the top, then drips of smoky Merlot. And then the oatmeal dabbed around it to kind of help this run. And uh, the eggshell, this was a coyote eggshell below. But uh, the rest of this is all Amico which like I say is uh, Blue Reteal was on, t on top. And then we had Smoky Merlot that gave us the purples and you can really see the colors in here, how pretty that is. And the oatmeal helps it just kind of run and you get some a little bit of whites in here from that. But it turned out really nice. Just a pretty little vase. And then this one, the next one comes up real interesting. This was uh, actually, Let's see what we have. Blue Reteal. Two times Blue Reteal on this. Uh, one coat of Indigo Float. And then you can see there's a little bit heavier coats here of Indigo Float. So we got these stripes kind of in here. And then two, two layers of Ancient Jasper. And this is just a real interesting little bottle. Hand-built bottle. But I love the way this ran and uh, it just really has character. A lot of character, a lot of break. You know, it's just really unique. Really unique. Here's one that uh, I don't think I covered in the first one. But it's actually the inside and the top half of it. Let me get some light on that. Was well, Indigo Float, three times Indigo Float, which is the blues. And then the bottom half was eggshell, which gives us the specks in the white there for the speckled buff clay by Laguna. And then the, the rim and the seam up here was more seaweed to help it run. And then I put drips of seaweed and wasabi on the inside where you see the greens. And then the dark colors were drips of smoky Merlot. And it's, uh, it's just a, a neat little... Uh, Occasional bowls, stash bowls, whatever you want to use it for, but it's just just a pretty combination there of just giving it some drips and runs. So, and here's a always a a favorite is just the coyote eggshell on top, and then the obsidian covered with smoky merlot. Like I was saying, you get these real deep purples in this. Really nice. So, that's a, to me, Obsidian and Smoky Merlot always comes out a winner. And uh, everyone seems to enjoy those purple colors. Here's again another one of those combinations. Where I put Obsidian heavy on the top. And then made it lighter as it went down and then covered all of it in Smoky Merlot. And you get the real darks up here, dark purples. It starts to run a little bit, get a little bit lighter in here. And then that very bottom is no obsidian under it. And you can see how the Smoky Merlot has a real kind of hazy, smoky. Right there's a really good picture of it. Instead of the dark purples, it's a, it's a real hazy, hazy Merlot color right there. But those are always really nice combinations to work with and to blend in with other things. I think they go great with the blues and uh, you know, the whites, the purples. Sometimes get it in with maybe Snapdragon or something of that nature. It's just a pretty little flower pot. It'd be great for someone. And then I have a couple of things here. Let's see, this was another one I think we did, which was... Uh, Always a favorite is Blue Reteal Over Textured Turquoise. And especially with this speckled clay, you get a real pretty color there with the little rust and break in there that you get with Blue Reteal. I did obsidian on the inside, and uh, I've never done that before, but the, the little iron specks ended up giving it almost a, just a, 
I don't know, a shiny look. And I may actually go back and uh, refire this one. Maybe put some smoky Merlot or something else in there to kind of lighten that up. I'm not real thrilled with the way the obsidian turned out. But that's what it does on speckled clay. And now I know, and so do you. So, let's see, I've got this little vase I think we covered, which is uh, wasabi at the top. And it came down about part way here. And here's where. Uh, let's see, then we took marigold up halfway, and then I put all of this with seaweed. And this is what I kind of expected from the other one, the way seaweed over wasabi tends to give you this breaking blue. But it's a it's a pretty little, almost retro, bohemian look to it. Nice little vase. Nice colors. And then I thought I had covered this one, but apparently I didn't. This was a bigger one. And this again is just, uh, this one turned out I thought really nice. Let me get some of these colors in here. Let me get the light right. This was indigo float, two coats uh, to begin with. And then I put two coats of ancient jasper over this. And then I took and just dabbed it with splotches of indigo float over the ancient jasper before it went in the kiln. And this is not on speckled buff. This is actually on Laguna Bee mix. Uh, and so it's a really smooth clay, but I had done some lines and some textures in here, just kind of made some marks in it to give it a vintage look. See right in here and scraped it some. But we got a real iron look in here Starting to get some reds and the turquoises. This is one of my favorite combinations. This is real pretty. And the only one left, which I didn't cover either, but just a nice lidded jar with Laguna speckled buff clay and coyote eggshell. And it makes for a neat little occasional jar. Put cotton balls in it or, you know, whatever. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please like, comment, share, and happy pottery.